This is episode 60 of Our Modern Heritage, the new home and family culture podcast. I'm your host, Jody Chafee. In this episode, I just want to share with you a couple of quotes that I've been thinking about and some of my thoughts about it. This first one comes from the, the Napoleon Hill Foundation. I subscribe to their daily inspiration emails, and this one really stood out to me. It starts out with the headline, Some people are never free from troubles, mainly because they keep their minds attuned to worry. The mind attracts what it dwells on. And then it goes on to say, Worry serves no useful purpose and can have a serious adverse effect upon your mental as well as your physical health. Charles Mayo, who with his brother William founded the famous Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, said, I have never known a man who died from overwork, but many who died from doubt. Because worry is directed at some vague and certain threat, it is difficult to deal with it logically. The best way to get rid of your worries is to take positive action to eliminate their source. When you develop a plan for dealing constructively with problems and get to work implementing your plan, you will no longer be troubled by worries. Negative thoughts always yield the right of way to a determined person in pursuit of a positive plan of action. Action is a principle of faith. That was, that was the quote, end of quote. Positive plan of action. Action is a principle of faith. Faith is another important tool for designing our family culture. When we define and design our vision and values, we are working toward our goals rather than coasting or acting out of fear to avoid punishment or dwelling on worry and pain and negativity. Deliberately working toward a goal will yield completely different results as simply avoiding a consequence. David A. Bednar says that When we learn by faith, it requires spiritual, mental, and physical exertion and not just passive reception. Learning by faith involves the exercise of moral agency to act upon the assurance of things hoped for and invites the evidence of things not seen from the only true teacher, the Spirit of the Lord. In my efforts to understand resilience, I've learned that there are three kinds of coping strategies, three types of coping strategies, passive avoidance and constructive coping. You know, Napoleon Hill here talked about constructively dealing with problems and get to work implementing your plan. That negative thoughts will always yield to the right of way to a determined person in pursuit of a positive plan of action. So constructive, these three coping strategies, passive avoidance and constructive coping. When we are passive, we sit back and wait for the stressor to go away. With avoidance strategies, we ignore the situation and try to push it down. With both of these, we likely do things to console ourselves or numb the sensations of the stress. We are usually reactive rather than proactive. But with constructive coping, we deliberately work toward our ability to resolve our problems, to be able to spring back from failure or struggle, and do things to create the outcome we want by acting upon the situation rather than allowing ourselves to become a victim. When we sit down with our families to discuss our vision, values, and goals, we may ruffle some feathers. We may disrupt our norms. We may have to sacrifice some of our avoidance strategies to adopt some more constructive strategies. I think this is something I'm so set on because I struggle with it so much and because it's so hard. I'm determined to work toward my own deliberate outcomes rather than passively allow life to drift by and then look back with regret that I'd missed out on opportunities to develop and produce better outcomes. A lot of these things are so hard just because they are beliefs, they're habits. You know, a lot of our beliefs stem from our doubts and our worries. They stem from our doubts and our abilities to to change, our our abilities to to cope. We doubt our abilities to cope, to to deal with the stressor. You know, for example, we may we may doubt our ability to 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 
you know, deal with like if our if our child is is having a, a tantrum or if our child is, you know, struggling with something, we might just have this belief that oh, there's this kid is just I don't know what his deal is. I don't know how to fix him or, or something. Or you know, we we may struggle with our beliefs and our ability to to be healthy because we just love eating treats so much and we love food so much or or we just are have a hard time getting up to exercise or things like that. These are things that I struggle with too. But but uh, a really good a couple of good books are the Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins and then this other book called The Power of Habit. And in these books, they talk about how a lot of times our beliefs and our actions are triggered by something. You know, our kid's starting to throw a tantrum. Okay, so that's a trigger. Or we, we reach for, for our treats. That's a trigger. We, we you know, we, we get a craving or something. <clears throat> but when we catch ourselves in that trigger then we can change. We have a choice. We can choose to be passive. We can choose to avoid it. Or we can choose to be constructive. And when we choose, whatever outcome we choose, there's a reward. We, f- we get affirmation of our beliefs. If we reach for that candy and we go, well, it's because I know that I'm not capable of changing. And so it affirms that belief. And then the reward is we get the treat. But when we do something different, then we affirm that we are capable. And that that's what we need to do is notice the trigger. Reach for something else besides the candy. Change your belief about your children if they are are throwing tantrums. And take that responsibility to get down at their level, to figure out what's going on. And then you will notice a change. And then you will also get a reward. Either the reward is that you get better relationship, you feel better about yourselves, or you affirm the belief that you can change. And all of those things will allow you to be more constructive and to deliberately work towards your goals. And that's something that I'm working on. I want to improve and get better outcomes. I want to improve my relationships with my kids. I want to develop skills that will make my life more meaningful and fun. I want to improve my health. And I want to actively improve my faith and spiritual health. Because I know that all these things, relationships, health, skills, my spirituality, all of these things will atrophy with disuse, with if I ignore them or if I don't constructively constructively work on them they will crumble with age and time but I need these things I need to have good relationships I need to have life skills and abilities to to cope and to, to manage stress to improve my health to improve my faith these things are so crucial to me these are important values that I have when I sit down with my family and discuss these values then we can all work together to deliberately work towards these things. What are some ways that you're working towards your goals? What are some ways you are deliberate and constructive? You want to be or you can be more deliberate and constructive. I hope you'll come and tell me about it on Facebook or Instagram at Family Culture Podcast or on Twitter at at underscore Family Culture. You can come check out my show notes too at homefamilyculture.com. I'd appreciate if you would like and rate and share and comment. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you again for listening. Mother Teresa once said, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. <laughs>